So we will start with two plays from the same game between Penn Trafford and Norwin. We'll begin with the Warriors. And as we mentioned before, their quarterback, Carter Green, has some big shoes to fill, but his career as a starter could not have begun any better as on their first offensive play of the season, Green went 99 yards for the touchdown, putting PT ahead of the Knights 7 0. My co host Dan Flickinger and Tim McCabe had the call of that historic run. Ben Trafford's going to start inside their one yard line. So the first possession of 2021 for PT basically starts in the uh, Norwin. Uh, end zone there, but a nice run by Green. Check this out. Carter Green is going to go all the way for a touchdown. Are you kidding me? 99 yards. All it was was a quarterback lead. Followed Iacomelli up through the off tackle. Couple nice blocks downfield. There was a missed tackle in the linebacker area, and he went the distance. Wow, the first snap for the new quarterback, Carter Green, of the 2021 season. And he takes it 99 yards for a touchdown. Give that kid some oxygen. It's pretty hot out tonight. A record that will never be broken, a 99-yard <laughs> run. That's right. Tim said it would never be broken. It can't. 99 yards, although he probably went longer than 99 yards because when he took the snap, he was basically in the end zone. I can only imagine how tired a player must be after they go 90. Yeah, I say need some oxygen, I think. Yeah. My gosh. He was celebrating pretty good, though, so he was all right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. You deserve to celebrate after. By the way, we're like at Seton Hill. He's a future Griffin. He's going to be yes. playing men's lacrosse yeah, not, here. Not football, but another that? sport. That's a, that's a talented young man. Brian Novotny, see, he has some endurance. Now, I don't know if they're going to need him to run 99 yards. Maybe not. But, but maybe shorter bursts. Sure. Also from that same game on the Norwin side, the outcome did not go in their favor, but the Knights had some highlights of their own, including a beautiful touchdown in the fourth quarter. QB Luke Lewandowski connected with running back Dom Barca for a 65-yard score, pulling Norwin within two scores at that time. Dan and Tim detail that touchdown. Twins to the left for Lewandowski. Play fake to the right. He's going to boot to the left. Going to look back to the right. Throw back. He has Barca, and he makes the catch. 30, 25, 20. Barca going to go for six. Excellent play design. Excellent play design. Sort of put the Warriors to sleep. Little play action. Roll out throw back. Barca comes out of the backfield and continues down the sideline. No one really knows he's there. Good pass by Lewandowski. And a big play, just what the Knights needed. Very well-designed play, Sean. And at the time, it really kept Norwin in the game before Penn Trafford had that final real offensive drive to, to grind Norwin down and, and score a touchdown. But at that time, kept him in the game, and Lewandowski got it out there. Barker ran underneath it, and he went for six. And the talk all offseason was the Knights want to run the football better, but that doesn't mean that they can't get the passing game going as well, and yeah. I think we saw enough, including using their running back as a receiver, maybe a sign of things to come this year for the Knights. Well, Flick, we've heard enough of you doing play-by-play. -play. Yeah, you're right. Yeah, absolutely let's, let's right. Let's get a real professional Turn it here over to you. on plays of the week, and we'll go to Hempfield area, as while most of the Westmoreland County games were already decided by the fourth, the Spartans were in a battle with Greensburg-Salem that came down to the wire. Trailing by a point in the final quarter, they took the lead on a 25-yard connection from Jake Phillips to Ian Tufts with just over three minutes left, which proved to be the winning play. Myself and Jack Reidenauer provide the audio behind Phillips now. Phillips again, Humphrey takes a shot, he's got a man open, Tufts has it, into the end zone, a 25-yard reception, and the Spartans have the lead. Once again, it's that Humphrey, that Humphrey set that play up beautifully, great round run by the Tufts, we have got a very, very interesting the first lead of this contest for the Hempfield area Spartans. Tough break when they missed an extra point earlier in the game, but they got that touchdown to pull ahead, then they sealed it with an interception return for score. That's a good win for Hempfield area. We'll hear from their head coach, Mike Brown, in a bit. 
as far as what that meant for him on a personal level. I also want to w welcome Jack Ridenauer. Yeah, when you said about professional broadcaster, you were talking about Jack, yes. not yourself, of he course. Did, yeah. He did a tremendous job making yeah. his debut. Looking forward to working yeah. with him again mm -hmm. this week. We'll move on with Plays of the Week with Greater Latrobe, the Wildcats. They made an emphatic statement in their whitewashing of Derry area, and it did not take long for them to establish command. In the first minute, quarterback Bobby Fetter produced a spectacular 50-yard run to put his head up, to put his team ahead 7-0, and the Wildcats, they never looked back. John Flickinger and the Latrobe Bulletin's Dan Schifo provide the commentary. As the Wildcats lose that yardage by penalty and Fetter's going to keep this time and he breaks the line of scrimmage turns the corner and down the sideline goes Bobby Fetter and Bobby Fetter is going to go no flags down it's a touchdown for the Latrobe Wildcats and they strike first yeah very similar play uh you know great run by Fetter down the left sideline but a very similar play there was some motion uh Kyle Brewer went across and uh kind of a run pass option Fetter saw something he liked Kept the ball, took it down the left sideline, and three plays into the game, Latrobe's up 7 nothing. 50 yards on that run after the penalty, after the completion to Clayton. Yeah, Sean, what a game for Bobby Fetter, a dual threat guy himself. Two touchdowns passing, one rushing. Didn't throw a whole lot, but he threw for 163 yards. So it'll be interesting to see how he does this week against Norwood. Yeah, uh, certainly. I don't think you could ask for a better start for Carter Green with that 99-yard touchdown as a quarterback. Bobby Fetter in his senior year got up to a basically a perfect start mm -hmm. against Derry area. It was almost perfect for Mount Pleasant area as well. The Vikings impressed in their season opener. They made quick work of the Burl Buccaneers. The second quarter and that one proved to be the difference and Robbie Labuda scored twice in a frame, including this 46 yard run to make it 27 nothing. Chris Smith and Mark Katarski are on the call for the junior running back score. Tyler Reese's dad, Brad, one of the real legendary baseball players, went on to have four years at Pitt and uh, was a heck of an athlete and so you can see the genetics certainly follows down through the line. It's going to be an inside handoff to Labuda wow. who's got nothing but green in front of him. 46 yard scamper for Labuda with 404 remaining and I'm going to go ahead and punch myself up another six with my handy dandy little program but Labuda that's number two for him. And that's the play, Chris. You pull those guards over to that right side, find a hole, and run in. Great start to the season for the Vikings, and always great to hear Mark Katarski. We're here at Seton Hill. I'm expecting him to pop his head in at any moment right now. Great Seton Hill women's golf outing, women's basketball golf outing, I should specify, at Glengarry on Sunday. Good job, Coach King. Did he golf? Well, he did. So it, he it was on, like, the beat the coach hole. You could either play against him or you could go up against one of his players. So we're thinking, okay, well, we know he's a good, you know, he's a good golfer, so we're going to go up against one of the players. Little did we know that she was like an all-conference golfer in high school. Uh -huh. So things did not go well for me. I think I duffed it off. So I, was, I was intimidated. Should have went against Mark Tarski. Uh, I know, I know. He probably would have got a hole in one. Well, from one great commentator to another, we, we conclude this edition of Plays of the Week with Franklin Regional and with JW. <laughs> the Panthers, they hit several big plays in an eye-opening win against Plum, and senior Caden Smith was part of several of those moments. With Plum driving with a chance to make it a one-score game, Smith intercepted a pass just outside of his own end zone. He then raced almost the entire field for a pick six that put his team ahead 27-6. Jonathan Whaley paints the picture of Smith's interception, one of three that he had on the night. Ramsey looking, looking, stepped up, gets hit. He's intercepted back at the two-yard line, across the 10, to the 20, to the 25. Look at him go, Kane Smith, 40. Kane Smith to the 50. Kane Smith to the 40, to the 30. Smith to the 20, across the field, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, 98 yards. Interception return for Caden Smith. You talk about electrifying. Caden Smith, you are too much, young man. 98-yard interception return for Caden Smith. And the Panthers build the lead to 27-6 with 8.47 to play here in this second quarter. Smith does it again. What's that old movie for some of our older listeners tonight? Mr. Smith goes to Washington. Well, this Mr. Smith went to the end zone. Have you ever seen Mr. Smith Goes to Washington? I've actually not. I have, I have not. not. I've heard the title, yeah. for sure, but Mr. Smith went to the end zone. 